I'm Tom Gladden. Um, I had the fortune of 1972 attending Mount Ellis for a half of a year. It's all my parents could afford at that time, but I got absolutely fell in love with Mount Ellis Academy. This is the picture of the master plan that's been developed by the board here at Mount Ellis um, over a period of, of some years, actually. I think we started on the process back in 2003. The thing that, that was a driving force behind doing it to begin with was the desire to have a church for the campus. I've had the privilege of having my son graduate from Mount Ellis a couple years ago and my youngest son is now a junior there. It certainly is a miracle academy, uh, having as few students as it has coming from a very small conference uh, population wise and as far as uh, keeping the income going, it's just been a, a, a miracle academy. Every year something happens to keep it alive for one more year. In the summer of 2005, we experienced a modest earthquake centered about 60 miles away. It was a 5.6 on the Richter scale. And uh, um, surprised to find the level of damage that took place structurally to our girls' dorm and cafeteria. Um, when we discovered the damage, I called Adventist Risk Management and reported that to them and started a claim. And uh, they contacted me shortly thereafter and and let me know that they no longer carried insurance insurance for earthquake damage on, on buildings here in North America that are covered by them. Of course, that was devastating news to Mount Ellis because we would not know how to stay open. Uh, by some absolute stroke of divine intervention, uh, we found out that Mount Ellis's cancellation of insurance had not gone through. It was the only academy in the entire North America that still had earthquake insurance. Boy, the earthquake and the, and the insurance settlement that came out of that really were the impetus to get us going. This is the new cafeteria that we've actually completed. This was phase one and, and so we're off and running. Come with me and I'll show you what we've done to make the old dormitory safe. We had enough money from the settlement to be able to build the new cafeteria and with some extra donations to shore up the old girls dorm. This is a miracle school and, and after you've seen enough of those miracles you start to trust them. As you can see we've done some work in the basement here. This is the old dining hall um, and we've uh, built some support walls here in the basement of the building to give some strength to the building. The structural engineers uh, came up with this design and it basically constitutes a five-year uh, band-aid where they're saying with this, with this work it's safe to have students in but they have let us know that within five years we need to have the students out have a new facility. Um, otherwise there are about a million dollars worth of, of uh, shoring up that needs to be done in here. We've decided we want to put that money into a new building that will be sustainable and will be a great place for our kids. So we have, a, we have a real motivation to keep moving with this master plan. We're not sure where the money is going to come from but we didn't know where the money was going to come from for the cafeteria either. And uh, so you can see here uh, what we've done is, is kind of formed a, a campus oval type of situation where everything looks on on, a, in on a, a nice green center. Our new cafeteria that's just been completed, it's right next to the existing industrial arts building. The other buildings, the administration and, and girls dorm, boys dorm are currently in front of those. The plan is to uh, rebuild those and to kind of change the angle, administration building here, faces the road, is the gateway to the campus, and the student housing back here as far away from possible, as possible from the road uh, for security purposes and, and just uh, having it tucked back into the campus. This is the existing gymnasium with an addition, a wraparound addition to it, but really the thing that, that has to be done before any of that can happen is, uh, is a new water and sewer system. Um, in order, to, in order to bring any other building online, that's something that has to be done. Not a very sexy project, but something that we're, we're working on and is the next thing on the docket. One of our goals for Mount Ellis Academy has been that every student at the Academy have opportunity for a mission trip. In 2008, we met that goal. Before I came here to Mount Ellis Academy, I was pretty wild, and my parents were kind of scared, and they didn't know what to do exactly, but after I came here, 
did a complete 180 and I wasn't the only one who realized that. My family did and they're so thankful and it all started here at Mount Academy. 14 seniors graduated. All of them had a mission trip. Ten of them had three mission trips during their time at Manolis Academy. That is what we are all about. I am a product of the Montana Conference Youth Program. I did everything from going to Camp Paxson with my two cousins. I went to Manolis Academy for four years. While I was here, I went on three mission trips, Mexico, Bolivia, Honduras, and I got baptized my sophomore year by Pastor Halverson. And then I graduated here after four years and I moved on to Walla Walla University. And when I was at Walla Walla University for one year, I decided to become a student missionary. And when I was there, I came back, did my year, and I loved it. And I hope that anybody else who's thinking of coming here should just come. I cannot wait to see what God has left for me to do. One of the greatest things about, about getting these kinds of kids here is seeing the transformation in their lives. Every year we have success stories of students and families that are able to come to Mount Ellis who felt that it was financially impossible for them to come. I'm Alice Ancero, living in Pryor, Montana, in the Crow Indian Reservation, and I'm standing here with my husband, Grady Ancero. Don't have that much money, but raising our grandkids and uh, sending them to Mount Ellis Academy. There's some parents back in the Crow Reservation. They ask us, how did we get those girls in there? A lot of students or parents uh, think that there's no way that they could afford to come to Academy even if they wanted to. And I'm here to tell you that if there's a desire, if a student really wants to be here, that we almost always find a way for the kid that's willing to work and uh, is going to be a good student and a good citizen for us. Joelle Gonzalez is a great example of that. Her grandparents showed up here at school and let us know they wanted her to come. And uh, she's a Native American, came off the Crow Agency Reservation. And it so happens that we've got some constituents here in this conference that have a, a great passion for Native American evangelism and ministry. And uh, one of those constituents stepped up and and, uh, and gave a significant amount of money for Joelle and her sister Mariah to be able to come to school. And that, along with our normal financial aid, we were able to make it workable for a family that, that uh, for most, they would have considered it impossible. Well, this is a really great school. I love being here. I'm glad I'm here. And it's one of the best things that happened to me.